Welcome back to Countdown. I'm Lindsay Jess. I'm Owen Thomas. How have your investments done over the past five years? Have they added 50%? Unlikely. Mm -hmm. But if you were invested in wine, well, you might have done even better than that. The LiveX 100 Fine Wine Index is the wine industry's leading benchmark. It represents the price movements of 100 of the most sought-after fine wines, for which, of course, there is a strong secondary market since 2007. It's up more than a half. Now, compare that to global stocks, which have lost 10% of their value in the same period. Well, you may have missed the party on this one, or maybe not. Yes, to take us through the advantages of investing in wine, we're joined here by Jeremy Peacock, senior wine broker at Vinex in the fine English home county of Surrey. Jeremy, good to see you. Now, we're talking just before the break about the scores on the 2009 vintage that we're about to see. Is this bit like Moody's S&P <laughs> rating economies? They put their stamp on whether a wine is fantastically drinkable or not. Well, the person who's actually putting a stamp on it is Robert Parker. Uh, Robert Parker is the most influential uh, wine critic in the world. What he says um, can make the market move. And he's about to rescore these 2009 vintages uh, of what are seen as the, the greatest wines in the world. There are 21 of these wines up for uh, potential perfect scores. And if he scores just nine of these uh, perfect hundred, as we believe at Vinex he will, then uh, it's going to make it the, the greatest vintage in modern history. Can you give us some names of some of the wines and vintages that he's talk you're, you're talking about? Well, Lafitte Rothschild, for example, which is uh, one that uh, everyone would have heard of. The 2009 vintage of that is up for, um, is up for a perfect 100. Uh, another one is a wine called Cos d'Estanel. That's another 100-pointer as well. So there's a whole list of wines there from the Bordeaux and region. how much are these going for? Thousands of dollars? Well, a bottle. not necessarily. Um, certainly, the Lafitte's of this world, you are looking sort of 10, 11,000 pounds for a 2009 case. That's 12 bottles in total. Uh, but Cos d'Estanel is much more uh, an accessible level for uh, investors who really want to try this market. To, to what extent is wine recession proof? Well, it, it does, it's not really affected by the outside influences. Because um, there's always loads of rich people around. There's always, all, there's always rich people and there's always going to be demand for it. But I think the key thing is that it's a finite supply. Um, there's only a limited supply of between 15 to 20,000 cases of these wines produced per Chateau per vintage. And you've got an expanding global demand coming not just from uh, Europe and the Americas, but also the, the emerging markets Doesn't as well. Doesn't that make it difficult to find value when you have one or two people in the market, like this Robert Parker, mm -hmm. rating them? Everyone's after the same wine. Well, Robert Parker, yes, he has a huge influence, but this market has been around for a very long time. And we can track it back to the 1950s, where we've seen double-digit growth. Robert Parker has only really come into the picture in the last 30, 35 years. You've got to look at branding as well. Uh, there's so many other, other issues and factors that really sort of drive the brand and, and the wines up. Now, there is something that has completely transformed the mm. wine market, and that is the Chinese in recent years. And mm -hmm. apparently the Chinese, unlike the Russians, they're real connoisseurs. They know what they're doing. They, they're setting up wineries all over China. They're setting up wineries over China. They're buying Chateau in France as well. Um, but what really started it was they, they abolished import duty for alcohol into Hong Kong in 08, and that opened the gates up to China. Um, very similar, we're excited further down the line, is uh, there will be a treaty signed between the EU and the, uh, the Indian government uh, with the same effect, and that could really start to move the market even further. So how do you actually start investing in wine? Sure, if some of these bankers have got yeah. their bonuses, mm -hmm. perhaps a little less than they were this time last year, mm -hmm. yeah, you can buy at auction and hope to sell in auction in five years' time. But mm -hmm. presumably, the wine funds are an easier way of getting onto the, the, the market. Wine funds are certainly an easier way. Um, I mean, we ourselves, we work as brokers, so what we would expect people is clearly you do your due diligence on the markets and choose who you're going to invest with. But um, there are specialists like ourselves who will recommend wines depending on the level that you can invest into this market and with. And typical returns, what are we looking at? In the last five years, uh, the LiveX 100 has produced 66% growth. If you break it down to the LiveX 50, which is the top, um, uh, the top five uh, first growth wines, Lafitte, Latour, Mouton, Aubryon and Margot, have produced over 100% growth in that time. We would conservatively predict um, double-digit 10 to 15% growth year on year. I've spoken to some wine experts who say, watch Burgundy, and this is also happens to be my, my favorite wine, <laughs> because the many. Chinese are going to turn to Burgundy next, and it, it might be an opportunity to get in there. What do you think? 
Um, there is certainly a market for Burgundy. Uh, the question is always going to be liquidity. Uh, the reason Bordeaux uh, is being so mainstream is because it's a very easy market to exit out of at the moment. The problem with Burgundy is a very finite supply, a very limited amount, uh, and it's a question of you may be able to buy the wines, but um, selling them down the, down the line could be harder. Nice drink them. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Peacock, senior wine broker at Vin X. Many, many thanks. Or cheers, I should say. Lindsay, I've got a question for you. What is Greek for wine lover? Hello. Enophile. Pop quiz tonight. <laughs> we have some breaking numbers on the Swiss economy and they're crossing.